Let's talk about Bernie Sanders now, who, as I mentioned here, and I got quite a few likes for simply saying it, it's clear now, excuse me, that Bernie Sanders is just pure evil. You have over half of Biden supporters, people who vote for Joe Biden, I'm talking about liberals, you know what I mean? Half of those people believe that there's a genocide in Gaza. So Bernie Sanders is effectively to the right, a majority of the Democratic Party, a right-wing capitalist party he is to the right of. He is to the right of majority of the world population. And that is the average social Democrat. You guys understand? The average social Democrat is to the right of the world population. AOC is a right-winger in the world. Because she supports war. She supports these violent capitalists. As you have South Africa completely destroy Israel. And, 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 and if he, anyone read it, if anyone watched the hearing, it was an ironclad argument for genocide against Israel, or the Israel committing genocide in Gaza. Despite all the overwhelming evidence, despite all these giant countries who agree with South Africa. So not only do you have the court that agree with South Africa in their hearing, you have countries that come in and out say like like giant countries like Brazil, Lula. Remember the person that that Bernie Sanders pre pretended that he was adjacent to? Argue about Lula that. saying that it is it's literally they literally fucking Nazis. Remember Bernie was trying to pretend that him and Lula is close in politics, but Bernie can't even say that. Yeah, the entirety of the global south, China, Putin, who Bernie Sanders think is evil. <laughs> Bernie Sanders think Putin is evil, as Putin is calling out the genocide, and he is not. So let's watch this clip, and I'll give you a reaction. And um, I don't, I, the, the debate between Norman Finkelstein and, and what's his name is pretty long, so I don't know how much we can get into that because I don't want to keep you here too long. I might that, that we might say that for another time. That, that's gonna be a banger. That that's gonna be like a one topic stream. Uh, <laughs> we, 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 we do cover it. Uh, I gotta check it out soon. I'll get off stream, but I don't want to keep you here too long. So we cover this, and I think I got one more story and we can wrap up. Uh, but I'm gonna, let's this is Bernie being asked about the genocide in Gaza, and obviously he give a cowardly answer. In your view, is what? Well, hold up. Israel is doing in Gaza a genocide. In my view, it is absolutely disgraceful, horrible, and I'm doing as a United States Senate senator everything I can to end it. And where I'm sitting is, and I don't know how many people know this, every year the United States provides about three and a half billion dollars in military aid to Israel. On top of that, there is a bill. I was supposed to be here earlier. I was couldn't come because a bill came up for not just all for Israel, $95 billion, including $14 billion for Israel. And I have led the opposition to that. I do not. Do you want a cookie, sir? You want a fucking cookie? Now, and I'm glad that no one is falling for this because even the PLC class hates Bernie now because he's trying to do this thing after. Saying that Israel has the right to commit, uh, to defend himself after refusing to call for a ceasefire, after voting for aid packages to Israel, Bernie Sanders waited until there was around 15,000 dead kids. And he was like, oh, I think that's good. I was looking for that around that amount. When I said that Israel needed to uh, go after Hamas, I had around 15,000 dead kids on my estimation list before I started to get queasy, before I decided that it was enough. Now they've gone too far. Now let's reel them in. Bernie, you get no credit. And this blatant attempt that you're trying to do to try and paint yourself on the right side of history is so transparent. Even the dumbest PMC leftists I've seen have called you out for this. Like even like the Ryan Grimm's, you know what I mean? Like the Crystal Balls, even they're calling Bernie out for this very transparent attempt to pivot after supporting the genocide. Anything you want to add before we continue, Robert? Yeah, actually, this is exactly Bernie's 
this is what he does. This is what his purpose is for the Democratic Party. It's to go out there and to pretend like you're a little bit better on things like this than Joe Biden. Yeah. Say, I'm doing stuff behind the scenes, everything I can to cut funding for Israel without actually mentioning the word genocide. It took him forever. I don't know. Has he actually said ceasefire, the word ceasefire? I don't think he has. I mean, if he has, it's been sparse. But that's that's his function is to go out there and give the appearance that there's a progressive wing of the Democratic Party that's better than the Joe Bidens. And uh, if you look, there's a tactic being used right now to kind of defend Biden from this as well. I think the Democratic elites, the real world movers, the donors of these people, not necessarily the politicians, but the real Democratic world movers that you know, are the puppeteers to these puppets. I think they understand that this is political suicide to back up what's going on in Gaza right now, like Joe Biden is doing right now. So if you've noticed, there's been a series of leaks to mainstream media outlets showing that Joe Biden is, you know, behind closed doors calling yeah. Netanyahu an asshole. You know, it's like, no, no one's buying that. We, what oh, that tells sure. me and Ber Bernie going out there and doing this right now tells me that the Democrats understand that it's political suicide to go out there and full throatedly be behind this genocide in Gaza right now. So what do they do? They trot their little lapdog Bernie out there to go out there and be like, well, it's, it's really terrible what's going on. And we're going to think about <laughs> messing with Israel's purse strings. And then they do that leaking stuff behind the scenes to show that Joe Biden allegedly behind closed doors, not publicly. And he hasn't come out and said anything against Netanyahu or the genocide. And he's not had anybody at the UN even abstain from any of these things. He's had them veto every single resolution for a humanitarian pause or a ceasefire that have come up at the UN. They're distancing themselves from it. And they're trying to make the Democratic Party almost like have them wash their hands of it a little bit. That's Bernie's purpose. And that's what he's out there doing. But it, what he's saying right here, nonsense. You, we all know he's not doing that shit behind the scenes. We all know he's not going to do anything to cross Biden because, and I'll, this is the last point I'll make about him, the Democrats just had a two-year majority, and Bernie Sanders was head of the Senate Budget Committee for two fucking years. He could have, at any point, he could have held up Israel's budget at that point. He could have held up the, the entire military budget as head of the Senate Budget Committee. He didn't do that at all. So we already know that he's not actually doing anything. Even when he, when he had power, he didn't do shit. And neither did the squad. The, all that they exist to do, their whole function is to give the illusion that there's some sort of like... Um, there's some sort of progressive fight, uh, progressive wing within the Democratic Party, but it's all it's all words. It's all words. When you actually look at what they do, they vote along with the Republicans all the time. Same with Bernie, man. He just it's all symbolism over substance. Yeah, let's continue because it gets really bad very fast. I want to see the United States complicit in what Netanyahu and his right wing. And I'm gonna say this because Bernie and his PLC. Uh, Friends in the Democratic Party that think they slick. You notice how he keeps it. Bernie always does, does the thing we said the Netanyahu government. Yeah, they try to think about Netanyahu like he's some sort of anomaly rather than it's not Zionist ideology that's the problem. And the fact that this was a you know an MI6 CIA operation that started back in like the 40s. Like, dude, like this is <laughs> like the Zionist project is the problem. Netanyahu is just a product of that project. Why do I feel like so many people are unserious about politics, man? It only takes uh, 30 seconds to look into the political situation in Israel and realize that if Benjamin Netanyahu called for a ceasefire and didn't do his military campaign, this motherfucker would have been strung up on a tree somewhere. You guys yeah. realize that only 1.8% like of Israelis was upset because how much their government bombed in Gaza? Around 48% of Israelis was upset because they felt like their government didn't bomb enough. So Netanyahu, like every politician, is doing what is going to keep his ass alive politically, which is kill Palestinians. Lunatic so Bernie pretends that, this, and this is the message of progressive set Palestine people like Marianne Wilson and Bernie's, they believe that Israel is a reliable ally, that they've just been misled by bad governance. <laughs> right. Like, it's such a silly worldview. And I'm sorry to stop it again, but I had to explain it because they do this fucking trick. Netanyahu See, is a moderate in the Likud that. party. He has been considered a moderate in the Likud party. When you see the genocidal statements, there have been members of the Likud party that call for um, the straight up airstrikes and blowing up Gaza altogether. Many people in the Likud party call for a next in Gaza. 
This is a position that Netanyahu doesn't agree with. Netanyahu believes in starving Gaza and controlling Gaza, but many in the Likud party believe that they shouldn't even allow Gaza to exist. Like, there's so many uh, levels to this that people don't understand. So Netanyahu is just there to facilitate the will of the Likud party, but he's the martyr. He's not the guy. And this is what they do with Russia as well, pretend that the only reason there's a Ukraine war because Putin snapped instead of the fact that this is the will of the Russian people to fight Nazis whenever they get close to their border. You know, know what I mean? But anyway, let me, let's continue the video. I just had to, I just had to explain that. Let's continue. Yeah, let's... Who and his right wing lunatic friends are doing right now to the Palestinian people. So my job right now is to support what the United Nations is trying to do, have a humanitarian ceasefire, see if we can get the humanitarian aid immediately in there, uh, and work out as complex and difficult as it is some type of long-term solution to you know what's going on now. But do you buy the South African case at the International Court of Justice that what Israel is doing in Gaza constitutes genocide or genocidal acts? I think, look, we can argue about definitions. It is horrible. Right now, 29,000 people have been killed. And some 70,000 have been injured. Uh, some 65% of the housing units have been destroyed or damaged. Con look, sound like you're describing a genocide, sir. And also, I'm it, right he's now. using the passive voice the way that the New York Times and WAPO does with everything. It's like, no, so he's going, oh, there's 20, 29,000 people killed. And some there have been bullets found in some people's bodies. Like, bro, it, admit what's going on here. Yeah, that's who's doing point. the sh who's doing the shooting? It sounds like you're regurgitating, you know. And then one other point: you notice that he never mentions Joe Biden. You notice that he never mentions that the actual solution to this. It doesn't matter what Israel wants to do. Joe Biden could turn off the tap with one phone call to Netanyahu, be like, "You know, you're cut off. It's all over. You're not getting your four billion dollars this year. You're not getting your fourteen billion dollars. I will veto it if it gets to my desk, which it's not going to do. It's it's in our power." It's in Joe, his good buddy Joe Biden's power to actually cut this off. But he mentions Netanyahu as if there's nothing that we can do, nothing that we can do to rein in this psychopath. It's like, no, they've even admitted, Israelis have admitted that if we cut off the tap, they wouldn't be able to do this. So you are responsible and you must take responsibility for the things that you can control, which Bernie can control things that Joe Biden does because he's one of the most popular, well, he was one of the most popular senators in the country. But, you know, he's let Joe Biden get away with everything to this point, so why not a little bit further? He never mentions Joe Biden at all. It's all Netanyahu. Yeah, let's continue. Some units have been destroyed or damaged, and I am worried right now, and I, I almost wonder why I'm in the UK and not back in the US dealing with this stuff, is that we have hundreds of thousands of children are facing starvation. That's what I have to work on right now. But if one agrees that it is a genocide, it means that other states have a legal right and duty to prevent genocidal acts being carried out. But he, see, we can. You guys see, that's why Bernie doesn't want to be called a genocide, even though he would describe a genocide when talking about it. You guys see how insidious he is. That that was a in this clip. I don't know who she is really, but in this clip, I was very impressed by her. In our follow-up questions, because that's a great point. He, Bernie pretended, like, oh, we we can talk about terms or oh, definitions, or oh, it's not that important. She's like, no, it actually is important. And Bernie Sanders is a gaslighting evil motherfucker who knows exactly what he's doing when he does that. You, you, you guys see what I'm talking about? Oh, just definition. No, that definition is important. You are a genocide denying Nazi scum, Bernie. You can talk about that. And that that's mean? another part of that norm. You guys see, oh, well, we can talk about that. You guys are talking about it right now. What are you talking about? This bullshit deflection that come from the PMC class. These people who think they're smarter than us. So they think they can redirect the conversation. Oh, we can talk about it. We're talking about it right now, Bernie. Tell us your, your position. You coward. It's like Dr. West. Do you guys know what speaking truth to power means? Dr. West says it. But Dr. speaking truth to power I means you call out Alexei Navalny as a white supremacist, even though it's uncomfortable for your social club. But he doesn't do that because he'd rather be in a social club, so he praises Alexei Navalny instead. 
That is not speaking truth to power. Dr. Cornel West doesn't speak truth to power, and Bernie Sanders doesn't speak truth to power. That is what it means. But let's continue. To prevent genocidal acts being carried out. But he, see, we can talk about that. But what does that mean I mean, in real terms? Right now, what I am trying to do is what I think is probably maybe, and I can do it because I'm a senator, you can't. Right now, maybe, maybe, if we tell Mr. Netanyahu <laughs> that he's not getting a check Netanyahu. with $10 billion more to continue his aggressive action, he and his right-wing friends may decide it is not a good idea to continue to do that. So that's, that's where I am coming from. In addition to... Uh, stopping the billions of dollars in military aid that Israel gets from the United States every year. Would you back calls for a cultural, sporting, and economic boycott of Israel? I am nervous about economic boycotts of any country, to be honest with you. Bullshit! We, bur bullshit, Bernie! You but lying scumbag! Bernie wasn't against economic boycotts and sanctions against Russia! You bullshit artist! This is what disgusts me. It's not a difference in ideology between the RBN left and these people. It's a difference in integrity. I have people on this show who are not communists, <laughs> who are people who are who are not 100% aligned on ideology. But it's the lack of integrity that gets me. You know what I mean? That's a lie. You do support sanctions. You support sanctions on Russia. But you say and, you don't support if you don't support boycott, I'll pass it right to you, Robert. But if you don't support boycotts, what methods should the Palestinians resist? You condemn a mosque, you condemn people who have the right to resist their violent oppressors. But if you support BDS, you're also wrong. So Bernie is saying shut up and die in the literal sense. You can't do peaceful protests like boycotting, and you can't also fight back in as a resistance movement. But go ahead, Robert. Yeah, and the Russians went out of their way in particular to avoid civilian casualties to a exactly. fault in Ukraine. They were actually going into, sending soldiers into areas like they knew that there were um, Ukrainian soldiers and mercenaries in certain buildings, but they knew there were also civilians in those buildings. And they would send, before they would bomb the building, they would send in the soldiers to evacuate the civilians first, even if a lot of the Russian soldiers died in said evacuation process. If you you know listen to people like Douglas, uh, Douglas McGregor and Scott Ritter, they'll talk about how like there will be books written on how the Russians actually went out of their way to protect civilians. So I mean, he's for sanctioning those people who are going out of their way in this special military operation to avoid civilian casualties. But no, we have to think twice about what's going on in. Gaza and what the Israelis are doing. And my follow-up question, the, the young lady does a great job. She does an excellent job. But my my question would have been a follow-up. is like, okay, so do you agree with what the Houthis are doing right now in Yemen, which is they're blocking the Bab al-Mendeb Strait in a bloodless blockade, not killing anybody, just simply blocking U.S. and Israeli ships, which cost them tons of extra money to you know sail around Africa instead of going through the Red Sea? Do you support that or not? And of course, his answer would have been, no, of course I don't. Those are terrorists. You know, he'll make up some bullshit doing some NY uh, New York Times or WAPO headline bullshit where it's like, no, 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 the Houthis are absolutely terrorists. And what they're doing to Israel is terrorism, even though they haven't actually killed anybody as far as I know, this or they why, hadn't up until recently. This is why I learned that social Democrats are actually very insidious, man. They are against all resistance. Stalin oh, used to call them the moderate wing of fascism. They are for real. Like yep. I, I've been so right because I heard that quote before. I'm like, what? That? I mean, while I was liberal, like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, yep. when well, you know when you first hear these quotes, now I completely understand what these motherfuckers were saying. Yep. like they are the a moderate wing of fascism because they don't want you to fight fascism. It's unbelievable. And they also but, serve their greatest purpose, which is what Bernie's doing right now, which is to give the illusion that they actually are doing something within the party. Michael Parente used to call this counter-revolutionary, meaning they're in there to give 
people the illusion and to make them docile and to make gullible, well-meaning people who want Medicare for all and to end the wars and all this other stuff that Bernie ran on in the last two elections, to give those people the illusion that those things are actually being fought for within the Democratic Party when they're absolutely not. They're just rhetorically talking about these things. And to be fair, the, the squad doesn't even mention those things anymore. They don't even pretend that they're not just Democrats nowadays. Bernie Sanders is the only pe or is the only person really even going out there and paying this weak ass lip service at all. So that's why social Democrats are in a in a very real way, they're you know they're wolves in sheep's clothing, and that's exactly their function. And so he's going out there and doing his job for the neoliberal establishment right now by giving the false impression that there's somebody out there that actually cares about the Palestinians, but we all know there's he doesn't give a shit. If he actually gave a shit, he'd be full-throatedly, you know, backing up what the Houthis are doing. He'd be calling out Biden for not making our ambassador at the UN veto every cease, ceasefire and humanitarian aid resolution that they put forward. But he's not doing that. He just goes, no, it's Netanyahu and what's going on is horrible. And he doesn't mention the Israelis, you know, by name at all. He just says, oh, it's what's going on over there is a horrible war and we have to do what we can to stop it. Yeah, this is. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna let the clip finish, and then I'll, I'll get my final thoughts after this. I'll let it finish from here. That's where I am coming from. In addition to uh, stopping the billions of dollars in military aid that Israel gets from the United States every year, would you back calls for a cultural, sporting, and economic boycott of Israel? I am nervous about economic boycotts of any country, to be honest with you. But right now, what? Uh, you know, people want to do, they can do what they want to do. But right now, again, my job as a United States Senator, and I'm kind of leading that effort in the Senate, is to tell Netanyahu that he is not going to get any more U.S. aid. Did you feel nervous about the boycott movement against apartheid South Africa? Was that a concern you had at the time? Boom, fam. Boom. I let it finish. But she executed him with that follow-up question, and he knows it. Look at his face. He knows that he's just been was effortlessly destroyed, but let's continue. Uh, what I thought that as a, an apartheid state at that point, it was important to put pressure. But people- Answer the question, motherfucker, which you didn't even get close to. In fact, you just proved the point you said people should put pressure. They, oh, how, Bernie? By boycotting or should, by, are you saying they should take up arms? <laughs> what are you saying, Bernie? That is a, that was a. I am so impressed by her. I don't know who she is, but that was a great series of questions. Well, fatality at the end. I am. I'm against boycotts. Well, what about South Africa, sir? Oh, people should resist. How? But boycotts, <laughs> shooting people. What are you implying here, sir? Let's continue. People can do as they want, and what you know. That's all. Do you think that it's right that? British citizens and American citizens can go and fight in the IDF when, as you say, there are such profound humanitarian concerns in Gaza? Well, I think if British and American people want to do that, I suppose they have the right to do it. It's not something that I really thought a whole lot about. Do you think they should have the right? You don't think much Look, about I anything. think what the Israeli government doing now is horrible. And I'm not quite sure why people would want to be, you know, part of that effort. This this fucking dance that Bernie does, literally everyone in the world sees through it. And I don't think I have ever seen anyone thoroughly destroy his reputation the way he has. Because even though we've seen through Bernie or, uh, after his campaign, there are still a lot of people who, who want to hold on in, in, in the United States. And even, I would say globally as well. Like you will see Lula, you will see Claire Daly, you see all these people who like, Praise Bernie, you know what I mean? But now that image is gone. Like, whenever Bernie leaves his fucking echo chamber, when he goes to, like, Dublin, for example, if he had met with anyone outside of his his professional managerial class, bourgeoisie social circle, this is what he'd, be, what, what he'd be met with. I know you guys have probably seen this before, but I have to show you guys this because this is Bernie Sanders' reputation from now on. And he, he won't be remembered, Robert, for his two runs. You guys think people are gonna remember those two embarrassing failed efforts? Who do you remember who ran in 76 and lost? 
Who who ran an insurgent campaign in '92? No one remember that shit in history. People remember who 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 supported a genocide, who did not. In the year 2070, they're not going to be talking about a random senator from Vermont who lost a primary. <laughs> they may be talking about the senator from from Vermont who supported a genocide, though. So I'm gonna play the video and we wrap blogging your last thoughts and we get out of here, Robert. But this is Bernie Sanders. <laughs> What's going on right now is, is absolutely outrageous. We've got to do everything that we can uh, to end the slaughter of innocent uh, men, women, uh, and children. What I have supported, and I will work as hard as I can to get the Biden administration to support, uh, is the um, UN trying to bring about a ceasefire, a humanitarian accord ceasefire, in order that to provide the desperately needed aid. When you get to the war, I, I, I get a little bit queasy. And I, I, you know, I don't know what, what genocide is. We use the word. We've got to be careful about that word. Uh, it is a genocide. What's your definition of genocide? Bernie, you have funded Zionism yourself. You have funded the Israeli settler state. Here you are, pretending you aren't. It is disgusting. Liar, liar, genocide, denier. Liar, liar, genocide, denier. It's disgusting. It is reprehensible. You are a child killer. You are a genocide designer. The United States military industrial complex are the largest murderers in the world. It does not matter if it is a Democrat or a Republican. You have murdered people around the world. The Native Americans are still being genocided. I have never heard you once speak about genocide. This is Bernie's reputation from now on. Genocide denier. Any last thoughts, Robert? No, I'm, I, I am very happy to see him fall from grace because he is more useful with his old reputation. And now that it's been destroyed, finally, maybe we can move on from this failed boutique left bullshit you and i have been on this for years but i mean you're like you said a lot of people they needed the mask to fully come off of these people and it it, it couldn't happen fast enough for me it makes me very happy to see him heckled like that and if i may i hope all politicians that are for this genocide get heckled like that everywhere they go for the rest of their miserable lives I, I i hope that happens i commend that gentleman for doing that that that's that's wonderful we need more of that because of course history will remember the people that were standing up against this and they will remember the people that were pretending like well let's play semantical games on whether or not it actually is genocide even though you know the president isaac herzog said that there are no civilians in gaza they're all hamas that's the president of Israel said that. Yoav Gallant said that they're all human animals. I mean, there are people in high up in these, you know, positions of power in Israel and their government that are explicitly explicitly saying that it actually is ethnic cleansing and genocide. And yet Bernie's trying to play defense for these people. No, history will remember you exactly for what you were. And it, I'm glad to see all these people crash and burn. Now maybe we can all agree that the justice democrats are just democrats and that this whole experiment running through the democratic party and putting all of our faith in these politicians is it, it was never going to work 